All right, so last year I went over this kit and its contents right here. That would be my get home bag. If I'm ever out and something happens where I need to get home and it's going to take less than 24 hours, this is what I grab. It's always in my car. I have a duplicate kit just like it in my truck. And um, it's, it's very functional. In addition to that, in my car and my truck, I also have another bag that supplements this kit. And it's got contents for if I'm going to have to take more than 24 hours to get home. Maybe I need, look at my cat. So this bag contains all the gear to supplement this bag and it's intended to be used if I'm going to be out more than 24 hours to get home. What it has is about three days of food, additional clothing, additional shelter items. The way it works is I either take the contents out of this bag and add to this bag or I simply open the top of this bag up and shove that whole entire bag in there less the uh, water canteen and cup on the side which I then add to the side of this bag and continue on my way. Now another thing I keep in each of my cars and trucks in the glove box is a Mora Bushcraft Black. Every one of my vehicles has got one in it. Even my ATV has got one in it. And that becomes my survival knife in each vehicle. Now another thing I keep in each vehicle, my car, my truck, and my ATV, and I even keep an additional one for use around the house is a military shovel and we'll get into how that's used also. Uh, if you get stuck in the mud or you slide off the road because they're icy or snowy, you can always dig out with one of those shovels. And you can see it's not much bigger than my hand. It's not very thick and it takes up very little room in your car. So that's what is kept in the vehicles. Now, next to my front door of my house, usually pretty close to the front door, I have this bag. And this bag supplements all of this stuff. Now, this bag isn't a bug out bag because I would never bug out if I was home. What it is here for is in case of a fire or tornado or something to that effect that causes me to have to leave quickly. I've already got a bag packed. Now the way that this works is I live in the middle of nowhere and I'm never going to just walk off my property. <laughs> that would be silly. My driveway is over a mile long. But what I can do is I can throw this bag into either one of my car or truck which has these bags and gear and get someplace safe and reevaluate the situation. And all of the gear from this bag not only fits into this bag, but these two bags combined also fits into this bag. Now, what is in here is mostly enough food for seven days and then some additional items for like recharging solar battery banks and that sort of thing. So we'll go over the contents of each bag and how they're used here in just a minute. Let me get the camera set up. We're going to go through this one first because the gear that's in it changed from the last time I did the review. And that happens often. I'm constantly evaluating uh, what I keep in my bags and trying to make them more efficient and that sort of thing. So let's get started. Again, after I get this let me explain set. this bag. 
here lately I've been spending a lot of time every day at the hospital it's an hour and a half drive one way it's 27 miles it's in a large city I live in a very rural secluded area but let's assume I'm at the hospital and a riot breaks out so I get to the parking garage and when I get to my car I realize maybe someone's told me, hey, they're blocking the road. Being that I can walk that distance home in one day safely, I'm going to grab this bag. I can do 27 miles in about 10 hours. Don't matter if I got to walk off the road or on the road. 27 miles road mileage I can do in one day. So assuming that I'm dressed appropriately and I don't need the additional clothing, that's in this other bag, I'm just going to grab this bag and go. This bag has pretty much all the gear that I need to get me home in one day. Now, one of the changes I made to this bag was I added this water bottle carrier and a cup. I didn't used to have it on here. My theory was I know from hiking I can find a metal can or something container along a road. Then I have to disinfect it. With COVID, my thought process kind of changed. I don't know if I want to pick up a pop can and tear the top off of it and risk getting COVID from the contents on the inside. So I went ahead and added a 40 liter clean canteen in a GSI cup in this very lightweight carrier. Now I've got the carriers that they show on other YouTube channels made by Condor that's an enclosed system they weigh way more than this thing weighs, and I just didn't want the weight, so I went with this, and it's worked out pretty good. On the side, I have some uh, mechanics gloves attached to a carabiner on a D-ring, just in case I need to jump a barbed wire fence or something. Let's go ahead and start getting into the content, because some of these other places changed also. I'll go ahead and start with this one, the outer lower compartment. I've got a couple of possible bags and I've got a tourniquet and that's all that's in that inner compartment. Now the tourniquet would be, you know, let's go back to this whole scenario. I leave the hospital carrying my bag. There's riots, the roads are blocked, people are hostile gunshots are going off. I get hit by a bullet. Tourniquet. Better have one. <laughs> if it's to a leg or an arm, you're going to need that. In addition to the tourniquet on the outer part of this bag, I got a couple items. One of them is a trauma kit. The trauma kit has quick caught bandages and some other things in it that go in conjunction with the tourniquet, but just the way that the bag is set up, I had to put the tourniquet separate from the quick clot bag. So let me go ahead and put the tourniquet and the trauma kit away because that's really all you need to know about those. In, in these two possible kits, I have in one, and now it's only in here in the winter time, I got a Zippo hand warmer. I have a spare Bic lighter. I have two Esbit tablets. I have Zippo lighter fluid in a Zippo lighter fluid container that is sufficient for one fill of this hand warmer that's only in here in the winter time. I've got a P51 can opener. I have a Tindar wick, which is used to start fires with. I have a Zippo lighter that I could technically split the fuel between the two if it's a really windy day or rainy day or something. I have a tube of chapstick and I have a pocket bellows for starting a fire. So that's one possible bag. You could kind of look that everything that's in this bag is mostly related to fire or heat. 
except for the can opener maybe. So you could kind of say that possible bag would be considered like a fire starting bag, although it didn't intend for it to look like that. That's just the way it worked out. All right, right off the bat, my battery shuts off. Hopefully we got all the way through the first possibles pouch. Let's go into the second possibles pouch. Also, if you notice, the one I said is primarily fire is red in color or kind of a burnt orange. That was intentional so that I could colorize and know that was mostly fire. Now on the second possibles pouch, I have the little fill container for the Zippo hand warmer. I have portable aqua water purification tablets. I have a spare CR123 battery. I have the charging cable for my Olight HR1 headlamp and M2R Warrior flashlight. I have a USB to USB-C charging cable which works on my phone. I have an assortment of drink mixes, single serve drink mixes. And I have a Johnson Silcock key which is used to turn on water supplies on commercial buildings on the outside. So I have a way to get water from an outside faucet that I wouldn't be able to get to without this key. So that is the contents of my second possibles pouch. The drink mixes are around energy and electrolyte. And again, all the gear that I'm showing you in this kit is in an identical kit that I keep in my car. This is the one that goes in my truck. The only difference is, is I'm using the 3V gear posse bag here. And in the other vehicle, I'm using the 3V gear outlaw, which is slightly bigger. All right. So over here where we have the trauma kit, I also have a right in the rain tablet with a pen inside a pouch for it just so I can keep notes. The pen is back here. So I can keep notes. It's right in the rain. It don't matter what kind of weather we're having. I can still keep notes. And it is stored up here. So let me go ahead and put this stuff back. Again, the possible pouches are stored in here with a tourniquet. Kind of a tight fit to get them in here, but they do actually fit. I was actually pretty amazed the amount of gear I could fit in this little thing. All right. I forgot to mention on the side of this is an Olight M2R Warrior light. Extremely bright, also rechargeable. I don't remember what the lumens are off the top of my head. I'll have to look it up. I'll put it in the comments. Olight M2R Warrior flashlight. Not only can it be used as a flashlight, it can also be used as a deterrent at nighttime if you know how to use one. <laughs> it can be used for self-defense. In the top compartment on the outside, I have a few items in here. There's a protein bar for calories, a second protein bar for calories. This is the sewing kit I recently did a video on. I will link to it in the videos top right, wherever it's at. So I just realized that my video is recording upside down of how it actually is. Either way, it don't matter. You can still see the contents. But I'll link to that sewing kit. Then I keep a quart Ziploc freezer bag with a little bit of fat wood already shaven 
to help facilitate getting a fire going very quickly if I need to. My cat is over there doing stuff that he's not supposed to be doing. And he's looking over at me like, uh -huh, you're recording a video and I know you're not going to come over here and get on me. Again, proteins. The sewing kit, multi-use, you definitely want to check it out. That's what I keep in this top outer part of the compartment. On the inside, I think some of the main compartment, I think some things changed in here too. So let's go ahead and go over it. I keep a Sawyer filter tucked away inside of a Sawyer bag that I can use to carry water. I keep an emergency AM FM pocket radio that runs off of an internal battery but over here on the side it's also wind up. See how when I'm winding it the red lights on it also has a small solar panel in the top to charge the internal battery but if the sun's not out or it's an overcast day and the battery's dead you can wind it up turn it on extend the antenna and generally find stimulus payment a lot of people are just check with now it's got a weather radio am fm volume tuning solar window built-in auxiliary flashlight if I needed one and the little charge up handle on the side one thing this doesn't have that I wish that it had is an external uh, ear earplug so you could use it with headphones it doesn't have it I wish it did it also has a way that you can charge external batteries with a USB cable and you can charge the internal battery with a USB cable. I also have a single candle lantern made by UCO. I also have an Esbit stove that has four more Esbit tablets that I could use to heat up water for the single serve drinks. I have a Leatherman multi-tool. This one has the charged TTI titanium. It also has a pocket bellows, a spare one, and it has a spare ferro rod. The other one has a Leatherman 300, also with a uh, ferro rod and a pocket bellows. I also have a larger USB battery. I believe it is a um, 25,000 milliamp hour battery that is solar. So this can be used, deploy it, recharge it, takes forever. And it can charge two devices at once. I also have a quick emergency base wrap. I have a Shamog. And I have a military style poncho that can be used with a quick, the quick ridge line. To deploy as a shelter if it's raining I can use it as a rain jacket um, if I needed to sit down and take a break I can use it as additional uh, cover I also have a bottle of Advil, 
I've got both acetaminophen and uh, the other one in there, and I also have some hydroxy cut, which I know from hiking is uh, a huge burst of energy. I have my Olight H1R rechargeable flashlight headlamp, and I have a already set up uh, quick deploy ridge line, which is made with night eyes, rope, and 550 paracord. Now I went over one other time that I also carry another firearm that is down inside the concealed carry compartment. I'm actually thinking about doing away with that. That's for a different topic, but right now it's still in there. Um, I carry, my everyday carry is an XDS 45 in both of my get home bags, I have an XDS 9mm with two spare magazines. I went over previously why I carried two different calipers. And you can watch that video, I'll link to above, if you really want to know the reason why. All this stuff fits back in there, easy peasy also. Let me set this over to the side and we'll go over the next bag.